Hey, what's up? It's Mike Hill Metal, and this is episode two of my Kerbal Space Program career mode. And Bill is about to take our first launch into orbit on the Berserker, as I called it, because it had a tendency to flip as I, if I wasn't careful. Uh, we want to get our apoapsis up around 100 and then circularize it and start grabbing some science. It was a pretty standard launch. No real problems with it. I probably could have tried to circularize it more with the original burn because I did have some fuel left over, but whatever. About a minute long insertion. It's not too bad. I did burn quite a bit past the apoapsis, so I was getting kind of worried, so I had to adjust a little bit. And there we go, we're in orbit. We start drawing some science out and decide to go EVA, get our EVA report. And I decided to do a little circle around the ship, just inspect it before we come back into the atmosphere. Don't want any cracks and leaks or anything, just blow up with all the shock heating. Even though I don't have deadly reentry, which is still kind of fun. Try to get more science as I fly over the other biomes. Try to get one over here, but I'm pretty sure it was this, the shores again. And more science. There's an actual one that I actually got with the biome. <laughs> More science spamming, pretty much. Not actually getting any extra science, though, because these are all getting discarded. And here's a look at the interior with uh, the IVA glass cockpit from Raster Prop Monitor and Kerbal Space Industries. I really like it. Especially when you put the, uh, the camera on the outside, you can actually use a virtual, uh, a r r real camera view on the outside. So you can land, and pretty much you can do the entire mission from uh, IVA, which is pretty cool. Just getting a little bit more science before I decide to come back in. I think I'm going to do one more orbit, and then I'm going to try and land right over the Kerbal Space Center. Yeah, I do one more orbit, and... Right over that desert, I'm going to start my uh, deorbit burn. Bringing it down, bringing it down. I think I overdid it just a little bit. Separate. Watch this from the inside for a minute. It's a nice view. Get it set up for reentry. Time warp into the atmosphere. And reentry effects should start right about now. That looks great. I can't wait until they actually add uh, reentry damage. I think uh, Deadly Reentry kind of overdoes it a little bit. That's why I don't use it. And there we go. Shoots deployed fully. And Bill is on the ground. He's going to put a little flag there for his landing site. Take a surface sample. And we are going to recover the vessel for some science. I grab some science modules, the uh, radial decoupler, and some engine stuff. <laughs> and then I head out for my second launch, which is going to go around the moon and back. It's not going to land on the moon, but it's going to go around the moon and back. 
I'm going to try to go for a uh, free return trajectory. <coughs> Pretty standard launch as usual. Uh, the one thing that I did add was the uh, fuel sensors. That once all the fuel is depleted from a certain stage, it will automatically stage uh, the next selected stage. So once the fuel is depleted, boom, they're gone and the next engine starts. I don't have to touch a single button. It's extremely useful when using asparagus because you don't want to be carrying that dead, dead weight around everywhere. I try to circularize this uh, straight through, but it doesn't go all the way as planned. Get a little bit too high, but that's okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. Get set up and time warp over there. And we're going to make the burn. Just a real quick one. Get rid of that. Then we're going to set up the maneuver node to get a rendezvous with the moon and get it set up for a free return trajectory. And get to time warp over there and make the burn. <coughs> Usually takes about 850 to get out towards the moon. And we're trying to set up the periapsis somewhere uh, set up so that it'll re enter the atmosphere on the way back. But we're going to screw with it when we get out here to try and get in slightly closer to the surface. So we'll have to make corrections a little bit later in order to get back into the atmosphere. Which is okay, we have plenty of fuel. Just get some science, get rid of that. Then we get low in over the moon and we start getting biomes. Just get more and more science, more science. Perfect flyby mission. Some more science. It's a lot of science. Most of it we cannot use. But and we are back on our way to Kerbin. And get her set up. I want to take a few looks on the the IVA panel. I put a camera on this time so you can actually see the nice view of Kerbin and the sun as we come in. I'm going to get a setup for re-entry and pop the top, pop the bottom off and get ready for the re-entry. I'm going to put her down somewhere in the desert here so hopefully get us a soil sample. That external camera view is awesome, by the way. It's by uh, Raster Prop Monitor and Kerbal Space Industries. I just can't get enough of that. Pop the chute once we get down near subsonic uh, velocities. And we'll watch the camera a little bit on the way down. And when the chute fully deploys, we'll pop back outside and time warp it down to the ground. And that's the second mission. And Bob successfully went to the moon and back, but did not land. That is going to be left to Jebediah in the next mission. I'm going to grab this, recover the vessel, and... We ended up with 207 science. It's my phone.
grab a couple of these things, flight stability and uh, the fuel lines and stuff, and then we ended up with this monstrosity, which I did not name. I just left it up to Jebediah to call it whatever he felt like. <laughs> and this one I actually did use some of the, the new struts by B9, which are actually really strong in comparison to the old school ones by uh, Squad. These you can pretty much do anything to, and they will not break. Bring this back up to about 100. Which uh, doesn't exactly work because the engines had a little bit too much fuel in them. And they popped off on the other screen. Try to set these up as close as possible. Get ready. Time warp up there. Make the burn. Pretty standard insertion. And we're in orbit. Now we got to get the uh, maneuver node set up for the moon. And get this as close as possible. This time we don't need the free return, so we just need to get it as close as we can. And we can make adjustments later. <laughs> My phone going off again. There we go, get us as close as we can, and now all we need to do is burn south a little bit and straighten us out, get us a little bit more close to the uh, equator, and drop the periapsis down somewhere around 25k or so. Get it in there, and then set up a maneuver node in order to circularize the orbit and get us in to orbit around the moon. Make the burn, and Jebediah is set. I'm going to keep the lower stage which still has quite a bit of fuel in it and I'm gonna use that to start my burn so I can crash that into the surface and not leave any debris floating around in space right now I'm getting all my cameras and views set up in the IVA just in case I need to uh, and then I'm gonna lower my periapsis down to about 4k three or four uh, kilometers above the surface and I'm going to time warp until I can get closer to about where the periapsis is. And then I'm going to change my camera view so that I can actually see the surface. And once I find a suitable landing spot, which is right about where the ship is right now, I'm going to make the burn. And then halfway through it, it's going to pop away and start the next one. And I'm going to try and go right between those two craters. <laughs> or slightly in front of them. Just slower down, slower down. I'm getting ground scatter. Slowly. I probably could have used the uh, radar altimeter from uh, steam gauges, but. And we're almost there. Four, three meters, one meter per second, and down. Jebediah is safely on the surface of the moon on his first try. And he's down, well, he fell on his ass, but close enough. He's testing out the gravity with a little jump, and he's going to make a flag. One small step for Kerbal. <laughs> Need some science, and then he wants to take a little trip and check out this boulder over here. Oh, a little bit too far. And I'm bored with that. Let's make it back to the ship. But I don't feel like touching the ground because I'm Jebediah. So let's do this all in one and get back in and get ready to launch. And get all the mystery goo all settled.
And I didn't notice that it was on a slant until a little bit after the landing, so this is going to be a little bit of a wobbly takeoff. This is not going to be fun. And whoa! No. Okay. That scared me both times. Uh, and from then on, it's pretty much just burned straight into orbit. I mean, it's the moon. There's no atmosphere to get through, so you can pretty much just turn over right as soon as you get off the ground. As long as you don't have to clear any uh, rims of any craters or anything. But yeah, you just set it up for a 20 kilometer orbit. It's perfectly fine. And then you make your burn back towards Kerbin. And I set my periapsis around 25, but it turns out that because of the gravity boost from the moon, as small as it is, it does change your periapsis slightly when you leave the, the sphere of influence. And get that down, down, down. Almost there. And that's good enough. And we'll do time warp until we're back in uh, range of Kerbin. And out of the sphere of influence of the moon. I'll grab some science on the way. Might as well. There's a few uh, biomes that we missed. On our way back to Kerbin. Time warped a little bit too close to the planet. I was kind of scared that uh, after we la launched that away from us, it was going to come back and smack us because of Ferrum. But uh, it did not. So we're good on that. Very, very high speeds coming back into the atmosphere. And drop down after the shock heating. And I'm going to pop the chutes. Forgot that the, the external camera was on the part that I dropped away, so I was kind of confused at that for a minute. And the chute's fully deployed in now. And Jebediah has safely made it back to Kerbin. And he's going to plant a flag. And it's going to mark his landing site for historical significance. And he's going to take his vessel back to the R&D department. And they will extract the science for 352 science. And we will unlock some more engine parts, some parachute stuff, some more science stuff, some more engines, some RCS stuff possibly. And that's it for this time. I'm Mike Hill Metal, and I'll see you next time.